Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wrong. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. The first story. Greedy B scammed the hut for free grub. Didn't change her MO or bribe me for my silence and got dealt with. The second story. Woman yelled at me because I ate two cookies. Teenage babysitter gets revenge by playing into hellish customers OCD. On to the first story. You busted. Alright, this happened a long time ago, when I worked as a delivery driver for a large US-based pizza chain. Keep in mind that while computers were used, the order-taking systems weren't nearly as sophisticated as they are now. There weren't monitors all over with orders listed, nor was there high-end order tracking software. We printed the orders on paper tickets as they were placed, and the only monitor they were displayed on was at the cash registers, for when we got back and cashed out the delivery. If an order was cancelled, it was just gone. This was around late 1995 or early 1996. I remember this whole incident vividly because it peeved me off so thoroughly. I'd been working there for maybe a week when I took a delivery to a customer in a sketchy part of town. Not sketchy like I'd be robbed, but sketchy because it was known as a poorer part of town and notorious for small orders and no tips. I did like I was told and made sure to only have 20 US dollars cash on me and headed out. When I arrived I saw three or four kids playing in the yard and was a little surprised since it was a single medium pizza order with cheese sticks and a two liter of soda. I knock on the door and a lady, she was actually pretty similar looking to the ain't nobody got time for that lady of meme fame, <laughs> answers and says, about time. So I hand her the boxes and quote the price. She opens the pizza box and says, this is not right. I ask her what's wrong and to this day I remember her answer because I would hear it again. I ordered a sausage pizza and breadsticks with Pepsi, not pepperoni with cheese sticks and Mountain Dew. I checked the tag to make sure I didn't mix up the order tickets with another customer and confirmed that the order did match the tag. It's strange that every item is wrong, but I don't know for sure that it's impossible since I'm so new. It's strange that every item is wrong, but I don't know for sure that it's impossible since I'm so new. Policy is that in these situations, we offer the mistaken items at half price, and if the customer refuses, offer for free, or offer to go remake the order and bring it back. She refuses half price, so I offer to remake it or give her the current order free. She says she'll take the order for free. I apologize for the mistake and she takes the order and shuts the door basically in my face. No tip. I notice on the way back to the car that the kids are still in the yard, but aren't playing anymore. They're just staring at me looking all sad. I realize they probably aren't going to get any of the pizza and that bums me out. I get back to the store and tell the manager what happened. He already knows because the customer has already called and complained that we messed up the whole order and that the driver tried to force her to pay. I deny that and the manager honestly doesn't care one way or another and explains that it's policy just to shut them up and he doesn't get penalized unless he gives out a ton of free pizza, so no worries. I let it go and finish my shift. Fast forward about a week. It's a fairly busy shift but I've learned my job a little better, so I'm taking multiple deliveries out at a time. I don't notice until I get to the neighborhood that the delivery I'm taking is to the same customer from before. I'm also pretty sure it's the same exact order, but I can't remember for sure. I don't see any kids this time as I knock on the door, but the same lady answers. I hand her the boxes. I don't see any kids this time as I knock on the door, but the same lady answers. I hand her the boxes and quote the price same as before. As she says what she says, I know it's the exact same thing she said on the previous occasion. So I do and say the same thing as before, trying to be extra nice, hoping for a tip this time at least, and she says she'll take it for free. She shuts the door, no tip, and I start back to my car. The door opens and I think she's decided to give me a tip, but no, she hollers, y'all get out, mom is eating, and the kids come out. I distinctly remember that one's crying. I'm only about 20, so even though I'm super peeved I don't say anything but I'm fuming mad as I drive back. I tell the manager that I comp the order again because it was wrong, with the same result as before. He doesn't really care. We're corporate owned, so it doesn't affect our pay when we give stuff out for free. I'm still mad because of the attitude and how she neglected the kids, not really the tip, since it's fairly common to only get tips on half the runs we make. This time I know I can pull her account up on the computer and put some notes on it, which I do. I say to forward her to any delivery driver to take her order in the future, hoping I'll be on duty if she orders again. Forwarding a call to a driver was a pretty common practice for a number of reasons. Might be the driver's buddy and you want to hook up, 
or a customer might request the driver to take the order so they can ask for freebies, cheese, plates, napkins, etc. So we had orders forwarded to us all the time. Brief side note not pertinent to the story. If you tipped, it was common practice for us drivers to note it to your account. We put a dollar sign after your street so we saw it on the ticket. You got preferential treatment. If there were multiple deliveries being taken, yours went out to you first. Good tippers also usually got a handful of cheese, crushed peppers, plates, napkins, and plasticware put into the warmer bag without having to ask for it. I kept it in my car so I always had it on hand. That usually resulted in even better tips for us, so it was a great system. Non-tippers got an exclamation point before their name and got their stuff dead last on multi-runs with no unasked for extras. Take note, if you order a lot of delivery, chances are the drivers have a similar system to reward tippers, if they're worth an SH. Tip well and you'll usually get premium service, badly, and you get shafted. $5 was considered a pretty darn good tip at the time. I always tip at least that now and get great service. Back to the story. I was working again a week or so later and she orders again, except they don't forward it to me. So the whole thing is repeated a third time almost exactly. I don't see the kids at all this time. When I get back, I seriously edit her account, putting notes in all caps and adding C notes to her street address with text arrows. Surround her name with exclamation points. I go all out so it's impossible to miss. The following week she orders again, and they put her on hold and tell me to take the order. As soon as I enter her phone number on my terminal and her account pops up, I see the notes. Game on. I placed her order exactly as she says it, even though I know she'll say it's wrong at the door but then I place a second order for what I know she'll claim she ordered. As soon as the second order ticket prints in the cook area, I cancel the order. Normally, if an order is canceled, you just go back and pull the ticket so it's not made. I left it. When both orders were done, I headed out. When I get there, I don't see the kids but don't even realize it since I'm laser focused on effing this bee up. I took the first order to the door and knocked, and of course she complains that she didn't order a pepperoni with cheese sticks and Mountain Dew just like always. She of course claims she ordered the sausage pizza and breadsticks with Pepsi. So I play dumb, take back the box and look at the pizza while I say, I'm sorry ma'am, what did you say you ordered? She looks at me like I'm stupid and pretty much yells, I said I ordered a sausage pizza and breadsticks with Pepsi you dumb eh? Before she could react, I close the pizza box and say, oh this is wrong, hang on, and start to turn around. She hollers, I ain't got time for you to go back and make me a new one, just give me it for free. I looked at her with my sweetest smile and said, Oh no ma'am, I made a mistake and grabbed the wrong one. Your sausage peaches in the car. That'll be $16.50, or whatever the total was. Her jaw dropped. I went to the car, grabbed the second order and walked back. She's still standing there, so I repeat, $16.50 please, and wait. She scrambled. She went inside and started going all through the house, gathering change in what bills she could find. She finally managed to come up with what looked like enough and paid me. I honestly didn't count all the loose change. I had enough tips to easily cover whatever the shortfall was. My point was made. As I'm handing her the pizza, I say to her, ma'am, if you had tipped me while you were scamming pizza place, I would have been happy to go along with it for as long as the manager put up with it. But you stiffed me then called the manager to complain about me. Move your scam to some other place. We won't take your orders anymore. Total bluff. I couldn't ban her really. I walk back to the car feeling like a boss and go back to the store. She had of course called the manager and complained by the time I got back, saying I was rude and insulted her then overcharged her. I had to explain what I'd done. He thought it was funny and let me slide with a half-hearted don't do it again. I'd ended up having to pay for the spare order, which I had for dinner. I smiled the whole time I was eating it, and I swear it tasted better than a steak dinner. The manager put even more notes into her account and deleted her address completely, banning her from delivery making my bluff real. I have no idea if she used the same scam on other pizza places or not though. I wish I had called them all. There were only three at the time and passed her info around, but I didn't. I also wish I could say that her kids were outside playing. They weren't, and that I gave them the messed up order. I didn't. That would have made the whole thing pretty much perfect, but I didn't even think of the kids until much later. The look on her face when I presented her with the right order was a reward enough at the time. The last story is Teenage Babysitting Revenge. When I was in my teens, I had a paper route mowed lawns, that sort of thing, for extra money. I also babysat. One of my paper route customers wanted a babysitter for a Saturday night, and I took the gig. They wanted me there for 7 p.m., and I was 10 minutes early. The wife kept an immaculate home, everything in its place and very tidy. When I arrived, she gave me the rundown, including pointing out how she had graciously provided me a snack, two Oreo cookies, and a glass of juice on the counter. 
I had skipped dinner, and soon after they left I explored the pantry, found the bag of Oreos, and helped myself to two more. Now, this pantry was the size of a large walk-in closet and was stuffed. There were lots of canned goods, all facing forward with the labels in perfect alignment. There were cereal boxes set up on the shelves in descending sizes. I don't know if she was a 1970s version of a doomsday prepper, but there was a ton of stockpiled food in there. All went well until they returned. The wife said she was paying me from 8 p.m., even though I arrived before 7, because they were late leaving. She also made a point of magnanimously pointing out that the hubby was giving me a ride home for free. B, it's after midnight and I'm 15. Did you expect me to walk home? Whatever. Then the storm hit. The next day she shows up at our house freaking out on my mom, calling her a lousy parent and me a thief. Why? Because I ate two effing cookies. That's right, she counted the Oreos and found two missing. The argument was short. My mom told her to F off and she roared away down the street. Fast forward a month or two, and I'm delivering the Saturday paper in the early afternoon, and hubby asks if I'm available to babysit that evening. Apparently the sitter they had arranged backed out at the last minute. Against my better judgment, I accepted. I could use the cash. The wife made a point of mentioning that she didn't want to repeat it the last time, and made me agree not to eat anything but what she had laid out for me. Fine. I didn't know at the time, but it's clear the wife suffered from OCD. If I had known, I probably wouldn't have done what I did. I have a little more knowledge about psychological conditions now, but at the time, all I knew was that this woman was a bee who had yelled at my mom. So as soon as they left, I got to work. I removed every label from every can in the pantry. She had them all set up by categories. Soups on one shelf, canned fruit on another, canned vegetables on a different shelf. I scattered them. I also shuffled the boxes around. I effed that pantry up any way I could. I pulled the tray of Chips Ahoy cookies out and put them in the Oreos bag, then put the Oreos in the Chips Ahoy bag. I pulled out the bag from the Rice Krispies box and swapped it with the cornflakes. You get the idea. Then I left a note on the floor that said, don't ever call me again. They paid me when they got home, and I said I would walk home. I then took the money they gave me and left it in their mailbox on the way out. The next morning I gave my parents a heads up of what I had done, just in case Psycho Wife showed up again. They were disappointed but quite amused. She never showed up. I continued the paper route for some time, but within a few days I had received notice that they had cancelled their delivery of the newspaper. Fine with me. Over the next few months I would see them now and again, and would simply look at them and smile. They would scramble back into the house avoiding me. There were also some kids on my route that had some experience with this woman, and apparently she had treated others badly as well. That was the reason that she couldn't find a sitter. Word had gotten around to avoid her. When I told one or two what I had done, they all thought it was brilliant, and wished they had thought of it. Two Oreos and one glass of juice is more insulting than nothing offered, especially for growing teenagers. I really hope she learned some generosity and humility after this great revenge. The woman gave a teenager, and age people are known to eat until their stomach bursts, two cookies and juice. What did she expect? Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications.